by far the most likely reason why you have a bloated Excel file is because of unneeded formatting. So let me show you what I mean. Currently, you can see that my last cell in my spreadsheet is probably here. I'm going to make that yellow. Now, if I click on any cell and I press Control and End key, it will take me to the last cell with data. If I press Control and Home key, it'll take me to the first cell with data, which is A1. Now, Excel sometimes doesn't know what that means. So let's say I have some new data here, and then Control and End key will take me there. So it's a cross section of the last row and the last column. So if I add in some new data here, then it will take me there. And this is going to be my last cell there. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I delete this and I delete this, then Control and End key will still take me there because Excel still thinks that there's some stuff going on because I did enter some data there or even I just added some formatting there. So if I go in here, for example, and I just make that a color, maybe change some text color, and I'm not going to add anything, then Control and End key will take me there. Now, if I were to, you might think that's easy enough. You can delete that, but Control and End key will still take me there. So it's not that easy to fix, definitely not as easy as it should be, but there's a brand new feature in Excel Online at, only at the moment that allows you to do this in a couple of clicks. So I'll show you how to do that in a sec, but first, my name is David Manarman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, using Tech of the Workplace I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you'd like to see this kind of stuff, especially the new features that I love talking about like this. So we're going to get to the online version of this file. It needs to be saved on OneDrive or SharePoint for this to work. Uh, and then auto save to be on. So if it's not doing it, just turn auto save on, it'll prompt you to save it as is. So if you go to file and then info, uh, you can click open file location here, not open file location here, but the one here will open it on the online version, whereas the one here will open it in your file explorer. So it also tells you what the size of the file is, 12.5 megabytes. I do know that this is different to the one that's on my drive, which is 6.4, it's about twice as big. So I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. So over here, it does open up this website. And the one that I had was this one. So I'm going to open it up like that. And over here, this is going to be in the review tab and you have this brand new thing called check performance. Now, if you have a simple ribbon, it'll show you like that, but this is a great feature that can do it. If I click on there, it'll review it by sheet. And let's go to the normal sheet. This is the one that I have. So it has found that there's some text properties in here and there are some things in there. Now I can click on optimize sheet and it'll do all of those in that worksheet, which is great. And I can go here and I can also optimize all the sheets, but let's look at some other things. So in this one, remove number formats, text alignment, and some number formats as well. You will always select the data that you need to do it. Uh, go backwards, and then in payroll, I've also got some extra things here. And then in sales tax, I have the big one, which is all the way to XDD. It's like that, you can scroll across and see until it's there, but you can edit it. So it does allow you to check it, but it doesn't allow you to do at this point is remove them one by one. You can only remove them for the entire sheet at one time. Uh, also note that if this one is a hidden worksheet, then it does still show you there, but it doesn't let you remove them. If you hover over here, it says this sheet is hidden. You need to unhide it to optimize it. So unhide and then unhide both of those, and then it will remove them as I need to do it. So it'll also show you here how many cells are used and how many would be optimized. Now, if I optimize all, and go over here, it shows me 3.5. So it has really worked quite well there. So if you do go wrong, then you can click on there and you can go to version history. You can do this from either desktop or online. And I've got here, this is the previous one before I did what I'm currently doing about an hour ago. And then if you click open version, it'll open it. And then it says previous version. You can either copy it or save it as a separate file, or you can click restore and then replaces the one that you currently have open. Excel online as well. You can click here and choose version history and get pretty much the same thing. Two minutes ago, one hour ago. Back to document there. So um, let's look at a little bit more about check performance and what it actually does. So let's say that I have some text here and some text here. And I have this cell that is formatted in a color. So I'm also going to format this cell in a color and this cell in another color. And then I'm going to go to review and check performance. It's found two ranges, that one and that one. So optimize sheet, it removes those. And also if I say have any formula that's linked to it. So let's say this is equals is blank. And then this cell here. So I'm actually testing this one for whether it's a blank. So let's actually check whether a color here is removed. Now it could be anything. It could be like a border as well. Uh, let's do that as well. So let's check there and there. And now let's choose check again. So that's what it shows you if you've already got this open and it has four ranges, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So even though I am referring to this cell in a formula, it's still checking below that to work there. So this says true. Let's just keep an eye on whether that stays the same. So optimize sheet. And yeah, it's still referring to something afterwards but it does work quite well. Anything that is in until the last cell with data, it will work, but anything that's beyond that, it will not. Now let's look at what happens if you don't have this, because this is only available in Excel Online, which you might not want to use. And also it's only available at the time of making this video for people who are in the targeted release cycle. So the 
general population will not be in the targeted release cycle, which means that you'll get this kind of stuff coming up a little bit later. The next one I'll show you is super easy, just as easy as this, but it's only available if you have Excel from Office Professional or Office Professional Plus. So I'll show you how to check for that. If you don't see it in the add-ins that I'll show you, then that means that you don't have it. If it's built in, you don't need to install anything else to get that. It's just a case of whether you have it or not. Um, if you use certain versions of Microsoft Office, then you have this thing called the Inquire tab. The Inquire tab is pretty straightforward. It does more or less the same thing. Click on Inquire, choose Clean Access Self Formatting, press all sheets. We like to save changes. Yes. And then Control and N key will go there. You can see it's deleted this yellow cell as well, which is kind of nice. So, how are you able to get that? If you go to File and then Options and then Add ins. So, Inquire is the name of the add in and it's here. Uh, it's a com add in. So, I go to com add ins and go. And then you put a tick next to Inquire. If you don't have it showing as an active one, then you won't see the tab. And in File and Options and Add-ins, you will see it showing up here in the inactive ones. So Com Add-ins and then Go. And put a tick next to it and it comes up here. And it has other things that are kind of to compare different files to each other that could be quite useful if you are doing that sort of thing. But Clean Access Self Formatting is a really, really good one to get around that, again, in just a couple of clicks. So what do you do if you don't have either of those? So let's say I make a cell have this color here, and then I'm going to remove it, no fill, and then I still have that issue, and I want to remove that. So what you can do is you can select from this one all the way until the end, so Control, Shift, and Right, and then you can press Delete, and then you can click here on everything below your data, Control, Shift, and Down, and press Delete again. And now if I press Control and N, it will take me there, which is what I wanted to do. Now that is all really, really well and good, but it might not be that simple if you have multiple tables, you have multiple things on your file, and you're not really able to scroll across and see everything necessarily. So that's why the online version, I think, is the best one, which is really, really great. So um, another useful tool in the review tab is Workbook Statistics. So this will tell you what the end of your worksheet is, how many worksheets you have, how many cells with data, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, notice that if I do have that issue, so if I do that and that, then the cross section will be H20, and Workbook Statistics will show me H20 end of sheet. But if I delete these, then Workbook Statistics will show me C11, even though it is containing H20 based on what I've just shown you. So in this spreadsheet, I've got some images, I've got some Unicode. This stuff is not stored that efficiently uh, in certain cases. I've got some images in the cells using the brand new feature, the image function, only for Office Insiders. I've got data types. Now, data types can also blow your file, data model, uh, and, and a query, Power Query stuff, uh, some other stuff here that's just in the one that we just saw with the bloated stuff. So if I press Control and N key, it will take me to the wrong place like that. So in File Explorer, I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. So I'm going to create a copy of it. And here's a really cool trick. If you change this to zip, it will tell you it's unsuitable, but uh, an Excel, PowerPoint, Word file, these are kind of just zip files. So if I go to this one, Excel, I get a list of all the stuff within that. So my pivot table cache, is the stuff that controls what happens behind the pivot table, pivot tables, uh, power query things, uh, rich data types. These are the, um, the, the linked data types, uh, any tables, uh, any stuff in the theme, the data model uh, media. So here is where I have all my photos. So I can open this photo and show it to you like that. And also I can go to the size and I can sort it from biggest to smallest and see the ones that are the largest ones. So this one is my largest file, even though there's one that's in a cell. So back in Excel, I've got this sheet with a data model and it's also got a Power Query, and this goes all the way up to 20,000 rows. So this is a fairly large file, even though if I press my Control and N key, it's optimized, but it is still pretty big. So let's say you just wanna figure out which is the worksheet that is causing the issue. What you do is you go to File, and then you go to Save As, so you copy, and then I'm going to go to More Options. By the way, F12 skips you all of those steps. I love F12, and then you click here and you choose Web. Now, web page will do a specific type of thing. So I'm actually going to save it here. It says it's unstable. Yes, that's fine. It's going to take a while, but now it's done it. So let's go back to our file explorer. And here I'm going to see it's made this, and it's also made a folder. Now in this folder, it is now storing every worksheet and every image as its own separate thing. So I can, like I did before, sort by size. I can see that sheet 006 and sheet 001 are the really, really big ones. So if I go back in here, I can see that the first sheet is this one. So it doesn't number them regardless of what they're called. So if I press Control and N key, it'll take me to this one really, really far away. And one, two, three, four, five, six, data model. This is the one I recently showed you, and this will just take me there. But there is a lot going on here, even though it's not necessarily bloated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to my Excel file, because this is the HTML. So now I put it side by side with the zip file, and I have worksheets in here. And for some reason, it doesn't show me the same sort of thing. So 
Notice how firstly they're a lot bigger, and that's because, well, they're not zipped, you might say, but also it shows me that sheet number three is the biggest one in the zip one, but sheet number six and sheet number one are the biggest ones from the HTML web save as. Uh, sheet number three is all the way down here, and it's considered to be tiny. So my advice is uh, that this HTML one is a lot more accurate. I mean, let's see the file in action, and then you can judge for yourself. So I'm opening the file, look how slow it is to open up, and I'm going to check. So number six, one, two, three, four, five, six is the data model. And number one is the sales tax one, which if I press control and N key, will take me there. So this one is artificially bloated. And if I go to payroll, which is number three, control and N will take me there. So there isn't really much going on here. Uh, this is not one that's artificially bloated, even though it's showing me that it could be. All right. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Remember that artificial bloating from excess formatting is the most common type, but you can also have some stuff from data types, images and cells using Unicode too much and images inside or over cells. So my name is Uwe and if you like this video, then check out my YouTube channel with loads more stuff, including all the new stuff that I love covering, especially on Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. Thanks for watching.